Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ada. I use she or pronouns, and I'm the director of the Office of Civic Engagement. I am sitting here today with the Fairhaven Senators. Really excited to get to know them and why they decided to run. And I hope you all, um, people that are watching, are excited and want to run for um, Fairhaven if you're a Fairhaven major. So I'm going to pass it off to you two to introduce yourself. Well, I can go first. Um, my name is Rebecca. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a Fairhaven student. And my concentration is called cultural advocacy through documentary film and arts management. So I do a lot of film and music stuff. So yeah. Cool. I will go next. Um, hello, my name is Marissa McGinnis. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And I'm a Fairhaven Senator, as Ada has said. Um, my concentration is titled Storytelling Through Film, Creative Writing, and Identities, which is all about creating interesting stories um, and specifically like uh, representative film, and then also how stories impact us in our own identities. Awesome. Um, can you talk a little bit about what motivated both of you to run? Do you want to go first, Rebecca? Yeah, sure. Um, so I kind of took this position like end of spring quarter. So it was kind of differently for me. I initially initially wanted to run in the fall, but I thought it was going to be too much work. Um, but then I I realized this position opened up again in the end of spring, and I was like, maybe I should go for it now that I know how my quarter is going to go. And yeah, so I just decided to go for it. I kind of just wanted to become a voice for students, specifically for Haven students. Um, I've just always been an advocate for people in general. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, um, for me, I um, ran in the fall um, and I, as like a transfer student who came in last year right before pandemic, I just want, really wanted like some kind of community after <laughs> moving into like this online education realm. And for me, Fairhaven has really been a place where I felt welcomed and heard and respected. And so it felt kind of right to go into like a student voice or student representative aspect and really try to to be that representative person on a like wider scale for Fairhaven, because I do think sometimes um, we're a little forgotten about because we're so far and we do our own thing. Um, yeah, and it's been it's been great. Yeah, um, and so I know Fairhaven is one of the smaller colleges on campus, so there's a very uh, distinct clump of people that are in the Fairhaven major. Um, did that make it easier or harder for you um, when you were running? And what advice would you have for someone who wants to run and get their platform and what they're, what they're caring about out there? Um, yeah, I, I guess I could kind of speak to that just because Rebecca's hiring process was a little different. But um, it was a little bit of a challenge, uh, not going to lie. Fairhaven is a much smaller college, so it seems you know, I really relied on my personal relationships to like reach out to people that I had really created deep connections with and they were very responsive and, you know, really connected with me, but it wasn't necessarily like the other campaigns that were happening, right? Like a lot of um, the other senators, you know, really relied on social media and just kind of like posting like interesting posts. Whereas I kind of had to go into like people's DMs and be like, hi, my name is Marissa. Like, it's really nice to meet you. Um, and that was definitely like a big difference that I noticed because like their campaign Instagrams were just very filled with all this information while mine was a little bit more minimum and lacking. But like I was doing a lot of behind the scenes work. And then um, our next question is, what is being a senator like and what skills do you develop in the role? I know, Marissa, you've been in a little bit longer, so you can probably talk on this more. But Rebecca, um, maybe what were your perceptions of what the Senate did before you got into this position and what does it seem like now? Um, 
Well, what I knew about being a senator was just mainly being an advocate for like specific colleges, um, but I wasn't sure what specific things they were tackling on. So I've learned that um, basically we have to tackle on like BSL demands and just listening to students and figuring out what they want and try to like advocate a lot for what they need and what needs to be changed at Western as a whole or just all the different colleges. Um, that's what I've mainly learned. I'm still kind of jumping into this job position, so I'm still learning every aspect of it, but yeah. Yeah, kind of to tag on to that, like, you know, I think one for Rebecca's situation, just like jumping in, you know, two quarters after we've established, you know, an entire um, plan has been challenging for her, but also like, you know, she's she's really been just jumping in and trying to figure it out as we go. So she's doing a great job. Um, but I also think that that's like one of the things that I've learned about this position is that you kind of do have to go with the flow with whatever comes up because we live in this university and things just appear out of nowhere. Um, so, you know, when I initially started with Kara, we had all these plans in this timeline of what we wanted to do and what we wanted to tackle. And for some of the things we, we accomplished that and we, you know, we really followed that plan, but at the same time, we also had to just like scramble um, because, you know, certain issues would pop up and we felt like that took priority because it was such a pressing issue. So then we'd kind of have to put things on the back burner and, you know, focus on another thing and then you know go to another thing and that's been challenging at times but also really rewarding because like you know you it's very quick and you just kind of like learn as you go yeah and that kind of leads into our next question which is um what were your goals moving into this position and what have you been able to do in um, this position so far it sounds like you had like a detailed plan and some stuff of it, some some of it got like moved off of the priority list because of stuff that came up. But um, maybe talk about some university-wide things that you're helping out with, and also Fairhaven-specific issues. Yeah. So um, I'll be honest. Uh, when Kara and I were working um, together, and now as Rebecca and I are working together, we definitely tried to shift more to Fairhaven specifically, um, just because our college does run very differently from the other colleges. And sometimes when we would be working on university-wide things, they weren't necessarily applicable to our students in our college. So um, we've definitely taken a little bit of a step back in that. But um, for college-wide things, I think the biggest thing that we're focusing on is the honors college issue um, with the proposal. Uh, Kara really was someone who brought up a lot of concerns and questions about that proposal. and is still continuing to work on that voluntarily with us, which is really nice. And we've we've started to kind of reach a little bit, you know, it's, it's definitely like lessening as a priority, but um, we're still kind of talking to Dr. Linneman and other students, you know, the Ethnic Studies College, which is a part of a BSO demand. Um, you know, I think those are like wider campus things that we've been more focused on. Um, what are we doing now? We uh, are starting to, um, during the winter quarter, we took a bunch of testimonies about um, narrative evaluations, which is a part of our grading system. And there was a pressing issue um, and frustrations among many students that our narrative evaluations weren't getting completed by our faculty. And there weren't really any consequences with that. So we presented on that issue to faculty and now it's been taken over by a personnel committee led by Santag. And they've really worked hard to try and make sure that um, there's like a system in place to hold faculty members accountable. And we will be working with Stan um, further on that as he and the personnel committee tackle that issue and try and you know put it within the system of the college. Um, what else? I think the BSO demands number 13 and 14 have definitely been something that's been on my mind personally throughout the entire year, but we've faced more challenges with it. Um, main campus has the, the pledge, the pledge committee, 
that was um, established by the leadership um, committee, I think, I believe. And for us, that like that pledge <laughs> doesn't um, apply to Fairhaven because of how we work. And so um, we're hoping, at least I'm really hoping to like go back to that and really focus in on how we can place the spirit of those BSO demands within Fairhaven because um, it's really been a struggle to try and create like a, a cross-cultural class within our core um, be because of, you know, the way that our, our school works. And so um, hopefully we're going to be able to talk to the curriculum committee within our college and try and figure out a way that we can apply anti-racism and dismantling anti-Blackness within like education um, in our school so that no Fairhaven student can go through without having that kind of education. There's like nothing much for me to add, but yeah. Um, I know Rebecca, you talked a, a little bit about like being really wanting to be an advocate for people moving into it. Was that your main goal or did you have any um, like other things that like drove you to submit that application? That was my main goal. Um, but also I'm like a person of color and I wanted to like continue like, I don't know, having more representation of people of color in the Senate, I guess. Um, and I kind of just wanted to like, leave a legacy, I guess, and for other students to like follow similar footsteps um, and just, yeah, just show them that I like, I can be a support for them. Um, yeah. Awesome. Marissa, I'm, I'm gonna do another follow-up question with you, if that's okay. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the narrative evaluation I did not know that that was an issue on campus, which makes a lot of sense because narrative evaluations are essentially a grading system, which makes it much harder uh, for any applications you turn in if your professors don't write them up. Um, so when did, did you hear about this, uh, like as a student and when that was one of the your, like, things you knew about going into position or did it just like pop up as an issue? Yeah, um, I have like, just as a Fairhaven student, I've definitely experienced um, a professor um, specifically not doing my evaluations, but for me, it wasn't like a pressing issue at the time because I have a good relationship with that professor and it didn't seem like they wouldn't do it. Like I kind of assumed they would eventually get to it. Um, it was actually Kara who really brought that up initially, just right off the bat. It was the first thing we kind of talked about and she had expressed how kind of ridiculous that is, is, you know, we, you know, narrative evaluations in our like narrative grading system is such a core part of Fairhaven. Um, it's one of the reasons why I applied to Fairhaven and why I'm here. And, you know, it, it sucks that like, just sometimes professors for whatever reasons, um, just don't hold up their end of that. And, you know, we get our we get our little S satisfactory grade that we've passed the class. So technically we can go on, but it also brings up a lot of other questions of like, you know, for example, grad schools, when I was applying to grad schools, when, when like a class doesn't have the evaluation, it's just not on our transcript of our evaluations. So, you know, you miss out on that, on that part of your education and that record. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else was like, coming up with it. It also like just puts the burden on students, you know, students were reaching out to their professors being like, hi, when are you gonna grade, give me my evaluation? <laughs> and, you know, it brings up other issues for when professors leave and there's missing evaluations, then students kind of just get this like very basic, um, you know, sentence that says like, this student passed this class essentially. And you know, we work, we work really hard to complete our evaluations. Fairhaven, our finals are a week earlier so that we can have that entire finals week to do our evaluations. And just the, the, the thinking process of it all, you know, it, it sucks when, when a faculty member, for whatever reasons, um, doesn't hold up their end of that bargain. So 
we're, I'm really excited about the work that um, the personnel committee has been doing. We just had a meeting about it today. And it seems like there's going to be something in concrete writing to kind of uphold and take some kind of accountability for that. So I'm really excited about it. But yeah. Awesome. That sounds like a great win for this position that probably wouldn't happen if you, there wasn't students that are paid to do it. Um, otherwise, you'd have a lot of unpaid labor going on. Um, so yeah, those are all of my regular questions. Is there anything that both of you would like to say to someone who's potentially interested in running for your college or anything you didn't get to say during the interview? Do you want to go first, Rebecca? Sure. Um, I was just going to say that if you're thinking about running, I, th I think you should just go for it. Um, worst case scenario, you don't get it, but it's still like a good opportunity to get out of your comfort zone um, and just hopefully experience new new things and become more involved with the university, which is pretty cool in my opinion. But yeah, just go for it. That's my advice. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, I think in my experience within Senate and then also within Fairhaven, I think Fairhaven has a very specific type of community and we're very close and, and tight. And, you know, I the, the biggest thing that I've gained from this position is the support that I've received from our Fairhaven faculty and just being heard and and really supported within, you know, this journey or whatever kind of ideas come up and the close relationships that we have with them. Um, that's something that I've really, really valued within this entire year um, that I think some colleges might not get because of, you know, being a bigger institution and the dean having to focus on more things or, you know, for whatever reasons. Um, but Fairhaven really is so close and, and I've really just loved that community aspect of this job. So yeah, definitely apply. <laughs> 